May 3 is World Press Freedom Day. And this year, Namibia will be host to the global celebration, which is very fitting, given that Vintuk was the seat of the adoption of the historical Vintuk Declaration on a free, pluralistic, and independent African press 30 years ago. So today, as the event draws closer, it is fitting that I chat to Jafar Musa El Kadum, who heads the Vintuk Office of UNESCO, which, along with the Ministry on, of Information and Communication Technology of the Government of Namibia, is co-organizer of the event. So first question, good morning to you. Good morning. Yes, um, you. UNESCO hosted the 1991 conference, which gave birth to the Vintuk Declaration. Um, and this was organized as a seminar by Africans for Africans. Can you speak just a little bit to UNESCO's commitment to press freedom over the decades? Yes. Press freedom and uh, access to information has always been a key priority area for UNESCO because this is part of our constitution. Right. Article 1 of the constitution is talking about that, how UNESCO should stand uh, in its work to, uh, to promote free, uh, free flow of information and ideas through images and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 writ and, and, and words, actually. Right. So this has always been um, a priority for, Africa, for, for UNESCO. Um, in, in, uh, for decades since UNESCO has been, has been established, we support stakeholders to develop freedom of expression, um, supporting um, stakeholders to, 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 for, for advocacy in terms of freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. We support uh, the establishment of, uh, of uh, IFEX, Right. Exactly. The, uh, the, yes. And we, we support the, the also the creation and the and the and the and the, and the, the establishment of MISA, for example. And uh, what else? Uh, we we of course we we celebrate every year uh, the journalists of uh, of the, the uh, of the, the year the standing outstanding journalists through the, the award of the Guillermo Cano Prize. And uh, of course this is. Uh, uh, celebration of the, the World Press Freedom Day is a flag, flagship for UNESCO. So these are, we, we stand for freedom of expression. And I was also, let me add also the fact that we are leading the UN plan of action for the safety of journalists, which exactly. is also very, a important. very important, a very important element of our work and right. also for the work of the UN as, right. as such and, and for the for the, the, the media and journalism. Exactly, actually. and the campaign against impunity, impunity which is critical. Yes, yes, we support safety. democracy, we support transparency, etc. So this is, this is key for us and for UNESCO. Um, the other thing I'd like to ask you is this year's conference will be a hybrid one. Yeah. Um, as we all know, last year the COVID pandemic hit the world yeah. and the celebration which was in Netherlands last year, which was obviously postponed by yeah several months had to be an online only uh, celebration because of lockdowns and and the tremendous what can one say the the problems it has caused for the organization of this day so the fact that this year is hybrid both online and face to face uh, where it will be possible given the number of gather allowable people in a gathering in may we're not sure yet whether it will remain at 50 or whether it will be included can you talk very briefly, because a lot of organization is involved in an event like this. Can you perhaps just give us a bit of an idea of the organizational aspects that goes into organizing a conference of this nature, especially given its hybrids? Uh, it, is, it is clearly a tremendous uh, uh, a challenge. Uh, of course, we, uh, from the beginning, we didn't want to, to, to overestimate uh, and, and, and over, over promise. So we decided from the beginning to have uh, this hybrid format, learning from uh, the 2020 in The Hague how things happen. Actually. Right. Uh, so by hybrid, we mean that we will try to have the maximum or most of the session to be online, right. interactive. Yes. But, and try to have the minimum, the essential uh, sessions to be 
with a physical presence and with a limited number of participants because, of course, the, uh, the, the pandemic conditions. So, so uh, the, this hybrid uh, format, of course, bring in a number of challenges, but also a very interesting, uh, I would say, aspect of it, which is the, the fact that Namibia will learn about, and we will also learn about how to organize such a big international conference right with that format but this will implies what a very strong bandwidth system that needs to be put in place uh, it is it implies that we mobilize and 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 we put in place uh, a very strong multimedia productions that will be then connected for streaming live uh, interactions uh, of all the sessions now this is how we how what we are planning to do now the fact that we don't have the 800 participants, you know, from mm -hmm. uh, from the, the media practitioner and, uh, and 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 those who who attend this this meeting, or the 1,000, uh, we have the challenge of making sure that the way we build the program will be in a time period where this can serve also the the various time zones. Of the world, That's another which is point. which is another Absolutely. another difficulties, right? So, so these are challenges that were taken into account that were built in in in, in the in the let's say the conception and the and the the, the, the draft uh, program that we have so far as a skeleton to make sure that indeed we have the uh, the, the the participant that we are expecting, and by the way. We learn from the Hague that we have more participants than we used before because it is it's online. It is online. Yeah. So, for, so people participate. We have uh, more than 3,000 actually participants which were, who, who were online. So we would expect that to have the same, and especially because this is also to celebrate the 30 years of, of the Declaration. Declaration. So these are those, those challenges that we are, we are facing, and we are progressing well, and, and we, we, we we want to make sure that we, 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 we build this case and then we learn also from here. I find myself actually wondering whether it's more difficult to organize an online or hybrid conference than it is to have, you know, Physical. 800 to over 1,000 yeah. participants like they were in yeah. Ethiopia. That would have been 2019. Yes, yes. So I'm wondering, you know, yes. which is more difficult, but yes. certainly, as you say, it's going to be challenging and hopefully it will be a great success. Um, Another thing I'd like to ask you is obviously the Windhoek Declaration of 1991 was a declaration which applied at the time mainly to print media. Uh, there's no doubt that the principles enshrined in that declaration are still relevant today. But this conference that we're having in Windhoek this year plans to adopt a follow-up declaration to the Windhoek Declaration. And this also involves um, a lot of regional and other consultations internationally. Can you tell us a little bit about how that is progressing? That is progressive. That's 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 an excellent question because the way we we wanted to to also have this um, this year celebration uh, because this is 30 years of Windhoek, and we right. would like to we want to make sure that. We came out at the end, the, the, the closing, with the declaration window plus 30. Correct. Right? Which is contrary to the, to the 1991 declaration. We would like this to be not only for Africans or speaking only for, 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 for Africa at that time or print sure. media, but we would like to bring in all the contemporary issues related to media and have a contribution from all over the world, from the, the let's say, the, input. The, the virus, yeah, input. So we've launched a number of consultation. We call this the regional consultation. For us, regional consultation, sure. these are geographical regional consultations. Um, Latin America, the Arab states, and, and, and of course, the, the, the African uh, uh, and also Europe. We, we, we launched already those process, consultation. Consultation on the theme and the sub-themes that were uh, 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 adopted for this year, but also a reflection on what could be 
uh, uh, the um, a Windhoek Plus 30 declaration. Of course, learning right. from the various declarations, not only Windhoek, because we know that there have been a number of declarations sure. that, that that's, was were, 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 came out from a number of regional uh, seminars similar to Windhoek. So we want those contributions to coming in. And there is a specific uh, moment during the, uh, the, the conference right. where we'll have those wrap-ups. Exactly. And then the conclusions from the regions actually to contribute both, as I said, on the, the themes and the sub-theme, but also on the, the, the content of the declaration. Right. But reflecting also the specific aspect related to the media in those regions. Europe may reflect something sure, maybe different. specific to, to, to Africa and Latin America, okay. uh, Asian Pacific, etc. Et so this is how we how we plan the, 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 the process. And here, what is also interesting to indicate is that, um, you see, the, the previous year, um, ante COVID, those consultations used, used to take place outside the conference or linked, but exactly. this year, we, they are full part of the, con uh, of the conference itself. Right. So this is a very, a very positive thing that we, we say exactly. that in, in this case it is interesting. And also we want to make sure that this time the declaration that will have a window plus 30 reflect contemporary issues that Correct. we know, but also it is reflecting sort of worldwide uh, uh, issues. Right, that, uh, uh, right. Actually, yeah. while we're on the subject, I think, you know, especially any of the youth that are watching this now, yeah. again, just a reminder that 1991, when the Windhoek Declaration was adopted, it was largely about print media. Yeah. Um, obviously, radio followed with yes. the African Charter on Broadcasting some 10 years after the Windhoek Declaration. But of course, we have a new world today and a mm -hmm. new media, and not least of all is online and all the good things and the bad things that sure. emanate from especially the social media tsunami, right. as I call it. Yeah. But you mentioned just briefly, and I think it's worth talking a little bit about that, the Vintuk Declaration itself, although it was a declaration for and by African yeah, journalists, um, gave impetus to similar declarations around the world, from Kazakhstan, Almaty Declaration in Kazakhstan, to yes. Sana in Yemen, uh, Sofia in Sofia. Bulgaria. Talk a little bit about how or why you think this impetus took place. Oh, it is. It was a very exciting moment for UNESCO. And as I said, that they, this is issue of freedom of expression is embedded in our constitution. So I would like that we note um, how quick UNESCO uh, uh, built in the, the, the momentum, because right. this is a movement and UNESCO sure. built in that momentum. So May 91, the Windhoek Declaration. November 91, UNESCO General Conference took, a, uh, I mean, they, they adopted a resolution actually recommending that uh, the similar regional meetings take place in other, other, parts, other, of other parts of the world. But also, and this is very important, the fact that the General Conference of UNESCO in November 91 recommended that the, the Director General submits and the president of the General Conference submit this recommend, that recommendation to the UN General Assembly so that the 3rd of May is declared as the World Press Freedom Day, right. which is the case which that, we are celebrating. Absolutely. And this was adopted already in 1993. In, in, in in so you see how quick this went. And, and of course, you mentioned um, um, Almaty, you mentioned the conference in Almaty that took place, the, 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 the 92, 90, 93, I forgot, I, I'm not going to mix the years. Yes, we, yes. We have the, there we have uh, Santiago. Sa Santiago, we have Sana, we have uh, Sofia, which right. was the end in 90, actually in 97. So, so this was really for us to, to build this, this momentum and that movement that that's we, we are celebrating today. And this is very, very important. That's the reason why this year, I, when I was appointed as a, as a UNESCO, uh, UNESCO uh, representative here, I say Namibia and UNESCO should not miss to celebrate this 30th anniversary. And it, when you look at the, the proposed dates, we are coming exactly on the same dates as it was in 91, which right. is that we were planning to start 
actually on the 29th of April and ending on the 3rd of May, which is very symbolic. And we would like to have also specific session on the, uh, on the Windhoek Declaration and the, 30th, the 30th anniversary, having interview, having debate on, on all this, the, 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 the impact and the positive impact that Windhoek Declaration had. Right. Yeah. And also, you know, as you've mentioned, we both mentioned Vintuk, uh, that the whole theme of Vintuk was really a free, independent and pluralistic media yeah. for Africa, which gave rise to a global movement mm. to the same uh, extent as we were then coming out of the mm. Cold War and independent media being important mm. to take it out of government's hands to a large extent. Um, and then this year, the theme is information for the public good. Yes. Um, yes. And so obviously it's an important time to reflect yes. how things have changed over 30 years. And now we're looking at issues, not least of all, uh, the disinformation issue, yes. Yes. which is very prolific. It's not that we've never had disinformation, but it's just become so much more obvious given uh, social media and the mm -hmm. impact of that compared to the legacy mm -hmm. media of print or radio, for example. So. Maybe you'd like to reflect just a little bit on the theme of this year's uh, conference, yes. um, set in the context of the global environment, environment with regard to what is happening with media and journalism and in the context of the conference as well. Yes. Um, the, the theme, as you said, is information as a public good. Uh, it is to strengthen and to highlight the fact that we need information as a, as a right, because it is a human right. Access Absolutely. to information is a human right. But when you look at, indeed, the current situation, uh, we have, the citizens have more access to information than ever. But at the same time, because of polarization, politicization of the, the information, but also the the, the, the whole transformation of the media landscape, uh, right. which was brought in by the, 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 um, the technology, actually. Right. We have this raising, this tsunami of myths and disinformation, and mm. also other aspects related to attack to journalists, right. uh, issues related to right. gender, attack to women journalists. Um, so uh, it, it creates then a number of, let's say, uh, threats that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Threat on the, the uh, media viability, very Absolutely. important, because uh, you said Windhoek Declaration, Windhoek 91 was about pluralism, pluralistic exactly. media and independent media. But if we have today, uh, because of technology, uh, a number of media uh, companies just, you know, going bankrupt or having difficulties, then yes. we are losing the, the yes. pluralistic aspect. So, and we need to build on that. We need to see how indeed we reinforce the, the, the media viability in, in, in all its aspects. We need to look at how indeed, how to regulate, how to bring, look at this issue about the, the internet, uh, the companies on the transparency. How, how, how do our addressing this issue of Means disinformation, hate speeches, and all that. What is the role of the the, 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 the big internet companies to, right. to make sure that they 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 indeed we look at quality inform quality of information at large, right, to be shared to the citizen. And now the other aspect is because of this changing of landscape uh, due to, to technology, how we build in, how we reinforce the capacities of the citizens to indeed enjoy and enjoy the information. And this is really the essence of a public goods. A public right. goods has to have this quality aspect. It has to have, of course, the production, but also have to have a, a certain regulation for those who are, you know, you know the big companies, internet companies, sure. that somehow critical managing, question. yes, critical for them to coming in and make sure that we have quality information that is provided to the citizen. Yeah. So this is how, why we thought that at this point, yes, it is important for us to reflect that theme, right. promoting information right. as, a, as a public good. And I like very much the, uh, the design uh, of the, or, or the, the, the vi visual identity of the, uh, of the conference this year, which is 
connecting indeed that uh, you know uh, the logo or the, the, the design of 91 right. with the print media but also spreading and growing out of course uh, connecting with the with the digital information and of course all this has to flourish for us for peace and solidarity exactly. this is what we are looking forward exactly. and, 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 and this is how we connect with the theme for this year absolutely and last but not least of course may 3 is a celebration uh, of good journalism worldwide. I like to think of it that way. And obviously the highlight yes. of, of um, the event this year will also be the awarding of the Guillermo Cano yeah. uh, Press Freedom That's Award. And I'm sure the UNESCO jury are hard at work uh, trying to make a decision for this year. Um, so we will wait that decision. But last but not least, any final thoughts from you, Mr. El Kadum, on, on this year's celebration going forward? Anything you'd like to tell our audience about the event? I think for me, uh, I would like to come back to what I said at the, a certain moment, that um, 30 years of Windhoek Declaration and the impact that it has made in, in, in the media um, uh, professional, but also in, I would say, even in, in democracy, transparency, because media is important for all those, but it's so critical for us to, to, to understand that it is worth to invest on that because access to information today is and has a cost and we need to continue uh, uh, fighting for that. Quality information is important. Um, so having this returning to where this movement were, 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 were born is, is so important for the Namibians, for Africans, but it's a, for, all, for all of us, uh, so having a window plus 30 declaration to, to be, again, guiding us for the upcoming 10 or 15 years, I don't know exactly the speed, right. you know, sometimes we cannot think exactly. about 30 years yes. again, but at least maybe 10 to 15 years is so critical so that we keep uh, window really as a label for uh, a freedom of expression. And, uh, and safety of journalists. Um, this is a message I wanted to, to say. And, and I would really invite, uh, I would invite youth to connect because there is a specific session on what we call uh, youth newsroom. Right. This is a newsroom, right? Um, handled and managed by youth for them to report in their own way and their own manner with using their own language, but having the possibility also to meet with uh, the with, uh, a high standing journalist. Um, we have other conferences that are, are going to be online. I will really invite everyone to connect and, uh, and to be proud of this. And uh, this is what I wanted to say, uh, Gwen. Thank you very much, Mr. El Kadum. And from my side, I think it's important to emphasize also, just in conclusion, that this is a celebration of journalism and its role in the world and in society, in building knowledge based society. But Journalism isn't perfect, and it's a good time for us all to introspect about the things we can do, um, especially in this new environment of this digital tsunami, and also critically and most of all, just to remember that the world is not a safer place for journalism 30 years on from the Vintuk Declaration and the Guillermo Cano Prize, I'm sure, will draw attention to that. And so obviously we'd like to build a better world in which journalists are safe can do their jobs in safety. I thank you very much, Mr. El Kadum, for I your thank time. Thank you very much. And I enjoyed the discussion. And I'm happy to be here with you. You thank know, you. you're one of our, uh, our <laughs> champions, <laughs> and, and we are so pleased to, to And to one be of the here. old journalists. <laughs> thank <laughs> no, you very much. Thank you thank very you. much.